consists of 12 different stages going from beginner up to C1 level or advanced level. And there's a big focus on listening and speaking in the classroom. So a big focus on oral skills. And it's, very, it's quite intensive. It's very busy in the classroom. The teacher is always speaking. The students are always listening. And they're listening to English. There's no translation. There's no use of the student's language. It's all in English, but there is reading and writing as well. During the speaking part of the lesson, the teacher speaks quickly, and this is deliberate. The reason we speak quickly, but not too quickly, the reason we speak quickly is we don't want to give the student time to translate. If you speak very slowly to a student and you wait for them to answer, what they will do is they will hear the English, they will translate it into, for example, Japanese, they will think of their answer in Japanese, they will then translate back into English, and then they will speak. And in real life, there is no time to do that. In a real conversation, you have to listen and understand what's being said in that language, and then respond in that language. So what we are doing is we are replicating uh, a very, very important skill that students don't learn in a lot of other classroom environments. So I'd say the first thing a student needs to realise is that they're not going to have a chat with their teacher. Um, the Callum method involves a lot of speaking, but it's not a conversation. It's a very carefully designed way to introduce vocab, introduce expressions, um, introduce grammar effectively and fast. And it immerses the student into this kind of constant environment of English and develops their ability to think in English and understand in English, but it isn't conversation. So I'd say, first of all, when a new student encounters the Callan Method, they definitely need to know what the aim of the method is, okay? That they're gonna to learn to think and understand in English and learn the, uh, the vocabulary and the grammar of the language. Secondly, um, I would say that to get the most out of a Callum Method lesson, the student shouldn't be passive. They shouldn't wait for the teacher's help and, and then use the teacher to support them too much, yeah? And if they make a mistake, it doesn't matter. Everybody makes mistakes. You can't learn a language without making mistakes. And they should know that as well, be reminded of that. What they need to do is see the patterns. There will be certain mistakes they make more than others every time they have their lesson. And the Japanese student will notice that they keep getting corrected with her and an and the, or the confusion between L and R pronunciations. I'd also say, have a look at your book when you're at home, whether it's a printed book or an mm. ebook. The ebooks are in the app and they contain the audio, full audio of the course, all the dictations and everything spoken by native speakers. And lastly, I would say to get the most out of the lesson, especially with online students, is that I imagine and I am imagining here that some students might have their books open during the speaking practice and they shouldn't be open. The students must realize to get the most out of it, they need to have their books closed. They are not reading the answers. They are trying to say, trying to speak and, and get it right without looking at a book. would have to say Callan is not for everybody. It's not for somebody who wants to sit at the back of a classroom quietly and not speak and just coast freely through their English course. Um, you will find that very often in language schools there is a student at for example B2 level quite high but when you speak to them, they're not B2 level. 
they've studied B2 language, and which is upper intermediate. They might be able to read, they might be able to write, but they would not pass an oral exam at B2 level at all because they are not B2 level. And that could be somebody who's been sitting at the back of the classroom. So Callan does put an emphasis on engaging, be active, don't be passive, take part, yeah? Uh, and so that might explain that. They can use their eBooks, uh, or if they have printed books, the app can give them audio books, full audio. So between lessons, they can listen to the content of the course. They can do the lesson check exercises in the app, which revise what they've just covered in a particular part of the book. And they can do revision tests, which cover what they've done over a longer period. And there's so much that they can do outside using it as a way of self-assessing, self yeah? And, and they can improve between lessons as well as in the lessons. And if all that is happening, if they're getting the support and the teacher is doing everything as they should, then that will overcome that. Problem. With Callan, there's no requirement for that uh, because, to be honest, such a qualification does not prepare you for teaching the Callan method. Callan method is a very specific way of behaving in the classroom and requires different training. And uh, so, what you need is you need Callan method training. So, we organize training courses that last for 35 hours and in that 35 hours it's a very intensive training course and what you're doing is training the teacher to adopt the behaviors that they need uh, to use in the classroom which is asking the question twice quickly prompting and feeding helping the student miming and doing all these things at the same time, correcting by imitation. And all of these things are, on the face of it, unnatural things to do in a normal conversation. 